Yuzisov, a brand known for its cutesy romantic plot lines with a dash of action and a sprinkle of sexy content. They pretty much have perfected their formula and style of visual novels one after another. But what happens when Yuzisov removes its romance to take a plot heavy approach to their stories while also being all ages? You have Parquet. Hi, my name is August and welcome to The August Tale, and today we'll be taking a look at Yusasoft Sour's first all-ages title, Parquet. A fairly short sci-fi visual novel that dives deep into brain technology and the digitization of human memories. With the romance aspect removed, Parquet has to stand on its own through pure concept and characterization. And this one is a solid premise with wide potential. As part of a secret illegal experiment, Kanato Ibuki was born from the memories of others. Doubting his own self, he leaves his isolated room to experience the world around him. In a string of incidents, he meets two girls. Kido Tsubasa and Rino Ibaraki, two individuals whose lives have been drastically altered by these brain machine experiments. Because as it turns out, Rino and Tsubasa are not only two different people, but two different personalities coexisting in the same body. Now the premise of the BMI, the brain machine interface, offers a lot of sci-fi aspects to explore, like altering the human senses and copying memories. But Barquet takes a more emotional human approach on how it's affected the lives of our main characters. Kanato may be comprised of other people's memories, but that doesn't mean he has the necessary street smarts to survive, or the alcohol tolerance. Fortunately, Reno and Tsubasa are positive influences that help pick him back up. Thankfully so, since Kanato's continued encounters of the follies of the adult office worker lifestyle was getting dreadfully realistic. <laughs> Despite being a distant, gloomy loner, Reno holds a lot of compassion within her. You just gotta sort through all those awkward interactions at first. Reno is a rather secluded individual with very few acquaintances. Her boss, her subconscious pen pal, and a dog. So from a personal level, Kanto's the only person who knows her and her situation, and that lends itself to some cute, bashful moments when exchanging simple small talk. <laughs> Of course, things aren't always smooth sailing as Miss Wildberry Flavor has a bit of sass to her. Their conversations are some of my favorite parts to watch in Parquet. Not the banter per se, but the quiet, relaxing interactions of them enjoying each other's company. Between these two individuals not used to social situations, there's some great intimate heart-to-heart -heart moments. Post-sex cuddling? What about that visceral back-to-back -back friendship sitting? Now that's the good stuff. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the flip side, Tsubasa Kido embodies a warm and friendly attitude as big as her stomach. Only appearing during the day, she spends her time waitressing at the local cafe. When she isn't excitedly chowing down on two number nines, a number nine large, a number six with extra dip, a number seven, two number 45s, one with extra cheese and a large soda. Much to the dismay of Rina's body. Oh, <laughs> That said, Tsubasa's food outings and her interactions with Kanato become a strange metaphor for the sense of aimlessness Parquet has for the beginning half. Miss Sunny Side Up appears as this mysterious girl, and it's largely her backstory that pushes the actual narrative forward. It's only during the last two chapters that her personal grievances become prevalent and hit hard. And that effectiveness is attributed to Nao Toyama's wonderful performance, accompanied by the somber backing tracks. It's always the seemingly happy ones that like to bottle things up, unfortunately. And no amount of dark humor can fully disguise that. As with most modern uses of titles, the production and visual design is as sleek as always. And the character sprites and CGs are cute as expected. With a lot of options to provide and a built-in flowchart, it's clean and designed well. It even has a couple of cool unique elements like the visual glitches and the sun and night transitions. There's also a bunch of neat uses of Easter eggs hidden in the background. My favorite of them being Nene's face on the ramen shop sign. In conclusion, Parquet can be described as an experimental venture, but like with all prototypes, it has its imperfections. Even without the romance, Parquet still has an intense level of intimacy between its three lead characters. And like with all users of titles, its cute heroines are still as charming as par for the course. Parquet might not have the most engaging plotline and hilarious interactions, but in its heart-to-heart -heart moments and its last two chapters, there are strong emotional cores, exploring and sharing their own thoughts about about their own life and happiness. I give Parquet a 3 out of 5. And as always, subscribe if you like the video and want to see more. Check back every week for new content. For more of my thoughts, you can find me on Twitter at TheAugustTale. Check out some of my other anime visual novel reviews on my channel if you are interested.